This is what I've been after since I was 14 years old. I always would tell people like, I'm gonna go look for life on other planets and that's what I'm gonna do. And I left my small town in New Jersey and moved out of state across the country. And now I'm here and I'm studying microorganisms that could potentially be good analogs for life on other planets. And that's really, really awesome. Ariel Friel, and I am a third year PhD student in Dr. Brian Hedlund's lab. My name is Brian Hedlund, and I'm a microbiologist. Got really interested in microbes. You know, we don't know anything about them, you can't casually observe them. That's kind of the beginning of the end, you know, I just uh, fell in love. Our project really focuses on studying the microbial communities that are found in springs located across the southern hydrological Great Basin, such as Owens Valley, California, Death Valley, California, as well as Ash Meadows and Spring Mountains in Nevada. Ready? We're living out here on this very thin shell on the surface of the earth. And if we start to look down, microbes are living down there in aquifers and in fractures in between uh, the rock. One of the best ways of getting access to these microbes living the subsurface is by studying natural springs. Yeah, so at this point, we're gonna try to find the spring source, and the reason is that the source gives us a chance to look at the chemistry and the microbiology from the subsurface. Well, we're at least gonna go up there, just get as high as we can. sample the very source of the spring, we're sampling water that's been in the subsurface in some cases for tens of thousands of years. You know, life on Mars is thought to persist in the subsurface because the surface of Mars is pretty much uninhabitable. When we're looking at these subsurface communities in our springs, we can think, you know, these microbes are here and they're persisting in these environments. And so does that give us confidence that we could find life on Mars as well in the subsurface? So we're, we're measuring, is it five different analytes, right? So chloride 36 and tritium, tritium and C14, radon. radon. Once we have that clear source, we use our tubing and we put our tubing in as close as we can to get to that source. Go for it. And then we actually use a peristaltic pump to get the water from the spring through our tubing and into our bottles that we use for sample collection. Water of the gods. open and then we extract the DNA from those microorganisms. We amplify one gene out of the whole genome from each microbe that's in the sample. We have at least 20 or 30,000 gene sequences from microorganisms in each sample We make predictions by the collections of genes, what they're eating, what they're breathing. We can make some predictions about what they look like, their cell structure. We start to put together a picture about how these microorganisms are living the subsurface. So there's a lot of reasons why now is important. Even if you just think about climate change, these springs are potentially things that could disappear. This environment that we're in right now is predicted to become more arid. And so these springs can be considered to be almost threatened environments. If there is life on other planets, it's most likely in the subsurface. And so by studying life underground on Earth, it gives us ideas about how life might exist elsewhere underground. Hey, 
NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.